So we know this uh, award was announced on Monday. Now here we are on Wednesday. Just tell me a little bit, how are you feeling uh, with the news? Still pretty overwhelmed. It's been quite an experience, um, you know, starting with quite a surprise um, Monday morning. Um, but things are starting to sort of settle down a little bit. And, you know, I've had a little bit of time to process and, um, and really understand the impact of what's happened. Um, but it has been overwhelming the amount of, you know, support and well wishes and everything that have come in from all over the place and from all different parts of my life, you know, which really, it's gratifying to see how meaningful a Nobel Prize is, you know, not just in the science world, but more broad than that. Sure. Yeah. And uh, this research has to do with our immune system. The prize is meant to honor work that we did back in the mid-1990s. Um, I was working at a small biotech startup company that was located in Bothell, just north of Seattle. Um, and this was a biotech company that was um, based on the idea that you could use gene discovery to um, sort of inform new drug target discovery. Which was, which was really only possible because this was kind of also at the same time as the Human Genome Project and the tools were becoming available to really dive into the genome and genetics and all so that we had a better understanding of what you know, genes functions were and, and how they played roles in biological processes. So this research um, has to do with the area of um, autoimmunity and immune tolerance and kind of how the body maintains a balance between an immune system that needs to recognize and neutralize things that we shouldn't have in our body like microbes and viruses etc and making sure that that process doesn't get out of control um, uh, and also the other thing that is built into the immune system is, uh, is a way to specifically eliminate cells that are specific, that recognize our own proteins and, and um, other analytes in our body. So, and that's the idea of immune tolerance where we um, do not recognize and neutralize and destroy self antigens. I imagine people with autoimmune diseases, where, what fields does this research then we see it in play today? Like you say, autoimmune disease research, um, it's also become very important in cancer treatment and uh, organ transplantation, so graft versus host disease is a really big issue that needs to be managed in, um, in organ transplant situations um, so and and that's an example of where you know you, d you don't want the recipient of an organ to fight against the organ it needs to to receive it and sort of keep the immune system at bay so it doesn't um, destroy the transplanted organ mm -hmm. how um, you said that the research started in the mid 90s how long have you been working on this and then how much has built off of it in the last uh, years? Well, I myself, I worked in this area as long as the company was in existence. So the doors closed at the Darwin Molecular in 2003. And my own career and sort of, you know, my own and research interests have sort of changed since that time. But I think what's most important and what's being recognized by the Nobel Committee is that the discovery that we made you know, at the end of the 90s and published has really, it opened the door to a whole new understanding and field in immunology, you know, that's related to these regulatory T cells. So the impact has been felt, you know, throughout, throughout the field of immunology. And I think, you know, that's what's being recognized. My own, you know, my own uh, research in the area really had, you know, stopped when the doors closed mm -hmm. in 2003. Mm -hmm. I know there's a team of three of you, two other scientists, talk about what it was like working with them. Were you working um, collaboratively in that time period or what, what did that relationship look like? So my co-winner, Fred Ramsdale, was also my co-worker. So he was also at Darwin Molecular and he led the immunology team. So we worked uh, very closely but in complementary ways. So my contribution to the project was more from the genetics and molecular biology side of things, which led to the cloning of this really critical gene, the FOXP3 gene, while Fred's team was um, 
doing what they could do to, to understand the biology. Dr. Sakaguchi in Japan was doing work in parallel with ours, but we, we were not collaborating with him. When you get started in research, a project like this, when that was in the 90s, when working at that former company, do you ever think that something like this, this award, <laughs> is the end goal? Well, I mean, from the company point of view, we were really hoping to identify a great new drug target. You know, the ultimate goal was to translate the discovery into something that would be a treatment for human disease. And I don't think anybody was really thinking in terms of Nobel Prize, but we, but we knew that what we were doing was important as the project progressed and we saw that we were in fact, you know, opening up a view on these regulatory T cells, which was something that the field kind of postulated must exist, but there really weren't the tools to, to grab onto them and study them in particular. And so that's what our work did. It gave uh, researchers a tool to, um, so that they could really tag those cells and, and uh, study them. And that's where, you know, I mean, worldwide, there's been, you know, awesome work done in the field that has, you know, been a result of what we did. Mm -hmm. How does that, that make you feel seeing that well, work? It's pretty gratifying. It's, I'm, I'm proud and humbled. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, gratifying for sure. You know, understand your research specifically kind of wrapped up in the early 2000s when that company, you were no longer there, but is there still more work to be done in this field specifically in terms of our immune system learning it? Like what are Absolutely. next steps? Absolutely. Well, I think there are a lot of um, treatments in development that take advantage of the, the biology and the genetics that we uncovered. So I know there are things in development that are being applied to cancer treatment, to autoimmune treatment, to, you know, graft versus host disease, etc. So, and those things are not perfect. And so, of course, there's still work to be done. When you first got the news, you got the news in a sort of unconventional <laughs> way. What was your initial reaction to hearing those words that you were a recipient? I, complete disbelief. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was just such a surprise. Um, and it took a moment to realize, you know, like what the, what the topic was exactly. That, you know, what part of my career was actually being recognized here. And, and then it was, and then it became obvious. It was like, you know, of course, that was a really a seminal discovery that we were able to report on and, you know, and uh, disseminate to the world. So, but uh, it really was quite overwhelming in the wee hours of the morning mm -hmm. on Monday. <laughs> Working here, you went to the University of Washington, you did some work in Bothell, I think you were saying. What has response feedback been like in the community for you? It's been well, it's been huge. I mean, I've, I've been hearing a lot from, you know, former colleagues, former students, um, you know, alma maters who it, I look forward to having an opportunity to, you know, talk to the new generation of scientists and, and you know, share whatever wisdom I've gained over the years, you know, to help them realize that you know it's worth pursuing these goals and you never know where the science is going to take you or where your career is going to take you um, but perseverance and an open mind um, will get you far how did you fall into this research in the first place it was just something the company was doing that you were with or yeah i i was a pretty new hire in the um, at this biotech company but i was really excited about the idea of using sort of a gene discovery approach to drug discovery um, and so yeah i was very lucky to land in this you know really strong collaborative team of you know the immunologists and the molecular biologists and the genomic scientists one thing of note, it's, it's wonderful to be here at the Institute for System of Biology because there's, there is a common thread throughout the work in that Dr. Leroy Hood, who was the founder of this institute, where I've been since 2009, was also a co-founder of the company that, where the work was done. And he certainly had a vision back then that you could harness you know, genetics and genomics to um, discover new drug targets. And that... Um, certainly continues on here at, at ISV as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm so I'm proud to you know continue to be participating in that kind of work. Yeah, here. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
I know there's uh, an award ceremony in December. Will yeah. you be going to that? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I am excited for that. No, I haven't received any, you know, real details, mm -hmm. just the date so far. So, you know, there's a lot of planning to be done. And, um, but yeah, very excited mm -hmm. and very curious to see what that's all going to be like. Yeah. I keep hearing stories about, you know, the, the ceremony, very ceremonious. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how does it feel to be joining this list of a select number of people who have... That I need to get used to still. That is... That is a, an amazing feeling because that's kind of a, you know, it's now a part of history, you know, so that's uh, gratifying. Great. Well, thank you. Congratulations <laughs> thank again. You.